Well, Rick, you called me out for a public explanation. So, I wanted to keep our business as our business and not let the whole world know what was really going on at David's Farm behind the scenes. But you want them to know, so here goes. Actually, this video is not about gas at all. It's too lame to respond to that lame video, that pathetic video about the gas video that he made. It's about all the other things that led up to this. First of all, Rick never fixes anything that breaks of his or that he breaks of mine. So let's start the list. There's my little Indy Light Polaris snowmobile. Well, two years ago he was showing off going around the ice in the pond and he rolled it, busted the windshield up some more and busted the body up some more. Lots of chunks of plastic broke off. He hurt his shoulder. He wouldn't fix it. Handlebars are all bent down. He wouldn't do anything about it. So it's up to me. This year in the spring he took out my little bike without permission and was ripping around on it and brought it back dead. Couldn't understand why. He said he could get it started if he bump started it really fast but he couldn't start it by kicking anymore and he just left it parked. I asked him a few times to diagnose and fix it. He wouldn't. So after two months I finally got fed up that I couldn't ride my bike and I decided to take it apart, diagnose and see what was wrong. So first thing I did was take off the side cover, which is brand new now, and found out that he had flipped the chain off, the motor revved up, and the chain wrapped up inside there, and broke through the inside of the side cover where it's invisible, and hit the igniter thing that triggers when the spark fires for the magneto. Well, lucky that little igniter thing wasn't broken, it was just moved out of the way, but the inside of that cover was all smashed and busted, I showed him the pieces. So get it running was easy after that, but the bike still wasn't drivable because then shit and crap could get inside the ignition area. Took me almost four months to get him to even just buy the replacement cover, but it was impossible for me to get him to work on it and at least even fix or diagnose it. Then he took my 250 bike and drove it in a swollen creek during spring melt and lost control of it and swamped it right underneath the water and sp spent forever trying to get it running. He eventually did, drove it back to the farm. And people roll it, rode it all the rest of that day and I didn't have any idea at that time what had happened to it hours before. Next day I find out, so I take the oil pan thing off and drain the oil and it's all white. The oil is full of water and I had no idea and I asked him to replace the one and a half liters of motorcycle oil I bought for it for the oil change and he wouldn't. Oh, he does admit swamping it. In the summer a new bunch of guys showed up to the farm for the first time with all, all kinds of machines to drive. They love coming up here. They brought me a bunch of cases of beer. Later you'll see the message they sent me about their dealings with Rick. And well they, br they said they had made two of these motorized bicycles with the Chinese kit. They're both made from brand new bicycles bought from Walmart and a brand new Chinese kit, so they donated one to the farm, already assembled and working perfect, still in brand new condition. Well, Rick just hops in Bloke's truck, forgets it's parked right in plain sight in front of Bloke's truck, drives over it and destroys it. Destroyed the rear wheel, destroyed the pedal crank arms, the sprockets at the front, uh, the frame, it was completely unusable, undrivable. Everything from this side back was crushed. Of course, Rick admitted to it. We all stood there and watched him do it, but he wouldn't lift a finger to do anything about repairing this bike. Later this summer of 2011, he borrowed my tractor to go pick up his white Lumina that had been sitting in the forest for almost a year. You'll notice now how the rear boom in all the videos recently since the summer has always been sitting on the ground or not lifted up in its normal jacked up locked in position. Well Rick admits it broke while he was driving it, but his story is really fishy. You see he says he just hopped on it and just started driving it, and then all of a sudden it just let go and broke. Yeah really, I've been driving this tractor for 17 years and it's things never drop down by itself. I know exactly what happened on the way back to get from one side of the farm to the other through those badlands there's a big divot on the pathway and I believe he hit that divot without slowing down and it bent this arm that's made of one inch thick steel and caused it not to be able to be re relaxed. That arm looked just like that. There's two of them. Well, there's the cut off stub of the other one. 
the other one, which is exactly the same, was so bent and out of whack that I couldn't re-straighten it with any force that I could put in that small space. So I had to cut it off with a torch just to see if I could try to get this thing to relatch again on one catch, and it still doesn't. Now, all the time you're driving the tractor around since then, that boom is constantly sagging and coming towards the ground and causing the tractor to be really tippy by changing its weight. I keep remembering and turning around and lifting it back up. What a pain in the ass. It's a piece I cut off just trying to be able to get it fixed again because Rick refused to fix that too. Now, before Redneck Rickham put his trailer at the back of the farm, it spent 10 weeks here, parked right there where my blue minivan is behind my building, hooked up to my electricity. Well, in those 10 weeks of time, my electrical bill was $250. I asked Rick to pay a little bit towards electricity since he was using it 24-7. All he would give me was $15 for 10 weeks of usage. There's no way he used $15 and I used all the rest. But that's all I got. The fire pit he used was over there at that time. You can see the dead spot still there. And Rick had no working chainsaw. And my wood pile, which is under the tarps and in there, just kept getting smaller and smaller. And I would often see him burning wood with cut ends. Well, the wood out here is free, but I don't cut it for free. It, that cut, takes me time and money, and I do it for myself. If anybody wants free wood, they can come and get it, and so can Rick. But you have to do the effort. Well, Rick did find a little bit of wood himself sometimes, but I sure lost a lot of my wood when he was here and nobody else was. Now, of course, it takes a lot of work to maintain a big 100-acre property like this, and it's really hard doing it all alone, and I always wish I had more help. And a lot of you people think that Rick is a real benefit to the farm, and he's helping me all the time in doing stuff like that. Well, I can't say that he doesn't help. He sure doesn't help much. I'll tell you the help at least he did this year. So, first thing Rick helped me with, was holding one steel piece of angle iron while I was welding it for 10 minutes. Then he did a few hours of weed eating with my gasoline powered weed eater. And, you know, that's hard work, so that was good help. And I bought a lot of gravel to fix up a lot of bad spots on all my pathways and laneways. And he spent one hour helping me while shoveling gravel out of the bucket of my backhoe, individually filling in some potholes. And Rick spent one hour gathering rocks right there over yonder and filled up my Dakota pickup truck with a half a box of rocks. And that's it, folks. That's all the help Rick provided to David's farm this summer, or to me. You can see he didn't help or fix himself this summer either because he just made videos complaining about how everything was broken. He did make two personal accomplishments this year. He made a deck and he washed his trailer. Oh well, he did something. The truth is, I come here every day of the week, and Rick lives here th throughout the summer. He's here almost all the time. And I would never even know that he's even here. He never says hi. He never comes meets me or anything or waves at me. He, it's just like he's ignoring me for some reason, and although there's really been nothing going on between us all summer. He's just like he's not here. Sometimes I see him when he comes down and borrows the phone, and that's about it. He'll say hi. Well, I don't know what he does all day, but he ain't helping the farm out. I at least think someone living for free and sucking off the tit of the old man and getting such a great time, best time in his life, getting paid to do this, uh, would he'd be a little bit more happy to help me out. I did a lot of hard work this year and lost a lot of weight. Now some issues that happened at the trailer park. Well, there's Jay's trailer, and as you can see, he's got some fire smoke damage on it. Now, this is horrible what happened. It was late in the evening, and Jay was playing his music kind of loud, and he was playing it on big home speakers. Well, Rick comes over from where his ranch used to be, and started complaining, even though Rick stays up all night, that the music was too loud, and Jay didn't want to turn it down. Rick went back to his trailer, got a can of gas, poured it all over Jay's working speaker, lit it on fire, and then the trailer started to get licked by flames. Of course Jay was outraged because that's arson, and arson is criminal and illegal, and you would never do that to a friend. And risk, you know, burning their trailer down? 
Just because the music was loud? What does Rick think? He owns this farm and he's the mayor and he makes the rules? And then he tried to come back and party with Jay that night and act like everything was cool. And Jay said, I don't want anything to do with you. Now we're coming up the Bloke's trailer and Rick's trailer used to be right there. That's that deck he built. So, Bloke has a water tank he bought, and he uses it for, you know, washing dishes and washing his hands and stuff like that. It's hooked up to the trailer with a little pump. And he got all the water down from that pond and pumped it into that container with the same pump that I used to fill this big fat tanker. Well, once he got it all full and got that thing unloaded up there, Ozzy helped him. It was a hell of a lot of work to do on a hot day because that's a thousand liters. Then he put a little bit of Javex in it and bleach so it would keep the water clean and it's going from being stagnant and he thought he was all set for probably the rest of the summer. Well it didn't take long before the water mysteriously just started disappearing on weekdays and Sunday evenings. So bloke says to me, I think Rick is stealing my water. You know, why doesn't he just go down and get his own? He's got a tractor and a trailer. And I said, well Rick doesn't know this but I've seen him three times steal your water in the middle of the daytime during the week when you weren't here. And he goes, that bastard, he's even worn down a pathway to my tank where he's been coming over and, and carrying it out. And I said, yeah, I know. Then me watching him take the water out of the container, I actually would sit there, I'd be on the other side of the pit and walking by and driving by, and I'd see him using a funnel and pouring it into his own trailer. Guess what? Rick denies everything. He says he didn't take that water and he doesn't know who did. Well, that's really strange because Jay saw him on two Sunday nights that he stayed overnight when I wasn't here, also taking the water. And if you don't believe me, message Backyard J. So, do you trust anybody who, by two eyewitnesses, watched him do something on more than one occasion, and he denies it even happened? <sighs> Water's free, Rick. You could have just went down the pond and got it, but I didn't see any tracks from your tractor going down there last summer. The bloke had another complaint. He says, I've been losing gas too. So this is the device that he welded onto his gas cap and it's got a piece of lawnmower blade in the middle. Well, no more gas was stolen after that. Well, we're still at the bloke's trailer and bloke's, bloke also had a propane tank filled. He used it twice on his barbecue and then he comes back after a week of not being here and finds out that he's got no more propane. Well, gee, you don't use up a tank of barbecue propane in two uses. Now, no one ever saw Rick take any propane, and I'm not saying that he did. But his pro bulk propane disappeared during the week, and Rick does have a trailer that his fridge operates only on propane when he's using it. So, if he runs out of propane, he has to have something to keep his fridge going, his beer cold, and his food cold. So, who knows if he made a mad dash back to town, or how broke or how the propane disappeared from a new tank. Now the farm has a lot of equipment, so that means a little bit of maintenance on it to keep it going, and much of the equipment runs on fuel, or needs sharpened or whatever, so I own and supply all that equipment, but all I ask for is you bring it back in the same condition, or at least pay for the gas or replace it that you use in the vehicles or the chainsaw that you used. Ricks did start using my chainsaw now and again through the summer. He would bring it back sometimes very dull and say Jay did it, even if Jay had, wasn't the next person to use it and it was Rick the last person. But I can sharpen it, but it's just a pain in the ass. Why couldn't he admit to it? Now he never once ever bought gas and oil for the chainsaw any time he ever used it since he's been here. He also never once ever bought diesel for the tractor. He always used the tractor for maintaining or moving his cars around or scrapping them and loading them. He would never give me anything towards diesel. And there's shop supplies too. He often did a little bit of grinding and cutting or welding. He made this like setup where it used to be over there for showering and spent a couple hours using all my materials, which I gave him for free because they were garbage pick materials. But the stuff that had to do with welding supplies wasn't for free. And well, I couldn't get ever any shop supplies out of them. Money it cost me to purchase the stuff. And then there's the matter of the stolen cars. When I went to Holland, Rick scrapped three cars. One was a white Taurus wagon, I think a 96. Now, I don't know if he made a deal with those young guys or not, but the car was dead. But for some reason, he waited until I was in Holland to do it. So that's between 
him and them. But then there was Crazy Car Club's White Dynasty. Well, Rick made a deal with them that he would save the radiator and front plastic bumper off his green van that was sitting there that he scrapped this fall. Yes, he did give that to them. But that wasn't worth near the around $250 Rick got for scrapping their car without their permission. And now they want much of that money back. Rick won't give it to them. It's been over a year now. And then there's Skaven's car, the one he, the one he brought down from North Bay, the Plymouth Breeze, or Stratus, or whatever it was. Well, Rick waited till I went on holidays again. That car had a bad battery. Rick or Ozzy put one of my good batteries in that car, drove it off that cliff right there, flew down there, landed on my battery, and destroyed my good battery. First thing Rick said when I came back from Poland was, I owe you a battery, Dave. It kind of got smashed. Well, now I'm asking for the battery, and he won't give me a side post battery or a replacement or anything. He says, talk to Ozzy about it. He's the one that puts it in the car. Well, Rick, you're the one that took the car without the owner's permission, cashed it in, also got around $250 for it, kept the money, really pissed Skaven off, and I'll show you some messages at the end of this video. And so, why shouldn't you owe me the battery? Then there's my stolen catalytic converter. My Aries was parked last fall, right where that cop car was. And just one day I find three catalytic converters underneath my Aries. I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of weird. So I picked them up and put them in my building and they were locked up there. A few days later, Rick comes by and he's looking all around and I kind of figure out who put them there. And eventually he asked, oh, did you find any catalytic converters? I said, yeah. He said, where are they? I said, they're, I said, they're in the building. She says, where? I showed them. And, well, one was from my Toyota Corolla. Now, I had no idea Rick lifted that off me and hit it under there, but I, now I knew. One was from a Volvo that wasn't Rick's, and one was from that green van we just talked about. I had already taken in my Corolla one, because I had found it before Rick came back and got it, and I got $100 for it. Now, the other two converters, Rick just picked up out of the building and didn't say a word about the third one. He was totally silent. So as you can see, this was all building up. It just had to come to a tipping point, and it came to a tipping point on Thanksgiving weekend this year in Canada, which was like around the 12th of October. And, so, and that's when I blew up on them. You know, we've also had several potluck dinners, and that's a dinner where all the group gets together and they each make something, and we all share it, and we all eat together like a group. Every time we had a potluck dinner, which was about five times this year, Rick said he would contribute and he usually would say what he was going to make. Well, guess what? Rick showed up on time for all potluck dinners. He ate just as much as the rest of us and he absolutely contributed zero. And when I confronted him on this on Thanksgiving Eve when he was eating my food, he shut right up and didn't say a word. Enjoy the next couple messages you're going to see on your screen. They just randomly came to me. I wasn't expecting them, so there was no coercion. I could send, put out a lot more, but this is all for now. Rick asked for me to, you know, talk back about the situation. Well, now you can see everybody, the whole world's going to know. This is, this is Rick. Disregard those money comments about how much Rickham makes. He's just guessing. He doesn't make anywhere near that much money. Just read the rest of the message.